first of all, if uh, anyone uh, has any um, issues seeing my screen, just go ahead and um, uh, let us know. Uh, but at this point, um, I have up uh, pretty much six things that I think will, will be good for us to cover. One, we'll talk about the chart of accounts, uh, key to budgeting. Two, we're going to run a query um, on actual data. What we want to do is we're going to take a look at um, uh, actual data from the prior year of our ABC company and use that as a foundation for budgeting for the next year. Um, we'll go ahead and create a pivot table on that data. We'll go ahead and save it out to Excel. Um, we'll also create a, an import file. Or I'll explain uh, how we're going to create an import file that's needed to upload into MAP. Uh, and once the budget is in, uploaded into MAP, um, there's actually some uh, ad hoc ways we can uh, alter the budget. We can uh, manipulate the budget. So we'll certainly go into some of those features within that. But first and foremost, let me also walk you through. I've done an Excel spreadsheet. Green tabs are tabs that, uh, uh, that I've already created. The red tabs are uh, tabs that we're going to simulate what I've created. So we're going to walk through kind of looking at the chart of accounts for the ABC company. Uh, again, for budgeting, it's important to really uh, understand your chart of account, uh, understand financials. That's going to drive our budgeting process. Our actuals tab, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do a database query and we're going to grab actual data from math so that we can use it in Excel. To me, this uh, you could get this information uh, by taking a um, an income statement and uh, exporting it out to Excel. Uh, but once you get comfortable with database querying, uh, you'll find that uh, it's just much more user-friendly. You don't have to cut and paste. You don't have to um, uh, really tinker with it. Uh, pretty much everything is ready to go. So we'll kind of go through uh, how to uh, do a database query and grab this information. This is taking um, actual information by year, by period. Our beginning balance, our debits and credits for that account. Okay, we're going to turn this information within a pivot table to what looks like um, almost an income statement. We have our account number, we have our account description, and then we have periods one through twelve of our accounts. And then finally, we're going to take this information and we're going to create a income statement giving us net sales, cost of sales, gross margin, expenses, and net income. Okay. Finally, we're going to take this information and we're going to use kind of a workspace. And I've got a small variable that says we're going to take last year's information and we're going to increase it by 15%. And that's going to drive um, our information. Finally, we're going to take this information and we can create an import file that would be used to upload back into math. So kind of a lot to cover in 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to really kind of uh, go through some of these items. Um, if you guys have questions, we can always set up some time um, you know, afterwards where we can, you know, I know we have some uh, other seminars on database querying. Um, so some things we're going to touch on really um, are some nice Excel you know, functions that, uh, uh, that hopefully you'll pick up. So first off, chart of account. Um, in the ABC company, it's always important to understand your chart of accounts, understand your data. ABC company, we have a three-segment chart of account. We have the first segment, which is our main account. Our second segment is our department. And our third segment is our location. So account number 101-02-00, cash and bank payroll, is actually composed of main account 101, a department 02, and a department 00. Of course, in math, we have our, um, uh, if we go into our uh, GL of account maintenance, we're going to find that our department codes um, are listed here. So we have sales and marketing, accounting, engineering, shipping, and receiving. Okay. So we have our department code. Also have our location code. So the last two digits of the ABC company, we have locations east, west, central, and corporate. 
Okay, so again, important to know our chart of accounts. Now let's talk about taking um, last year's data and, uh, and using it for our decision making process. So I'm going to actually do a database query to get last year's data into Excel. I'm actually going to go in here. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to some other sources. I'm going to go to Microsoft Query. In here, I'm going to find the SOTA Math Only DSN. This is going to allow me to talk to all of the math tables. I'm going to find my company code. I'm going to log in. Namely, I log into math. I now have access to all of the tables. First thing I'm going to do is there are two tables um, that are going to give me all the information I need. One is the GL account. I'm going to find the account number and the description. Then I'm going to go to a table called GL period posting history. In here, I'm going to have my fiscal year and my fiscal period. And I'm actually only going to bring over the debit and credit amount. Okay, we're going to be budgeting for our income statement. Um, so our income statement really only needs the net changes per month, which are going to be found in my debit and credit column. Now I'm going to eventually pull everything out into Excel. So now I have um, all the information I need, or almost all the information I need, to uh, create an income statement. Now you'll notice in my um, tab that I created previously, I have the debit amount, the credit amount. What I like to do is create another column called amount. And if something has a credit balance, it's going to put it as a negative. As a debit balance, it's going to keep it as a positive. One other thing I like to do is the period column. You'll notice that it says 0, 1, 0, 5. Um, essentially, this is a string field in math. What I'm going to do is change that string field to a number. Thus, when I create my pivot table, it's going to go 1 through 12. Okay. If I don't change it to a number, what I'll find is that my columns are going to look like um, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, and so on. So this does become uh, uh, helpful in terms of creating a pivot table. The other two are really um, uh, optional. Uh, you'll notice I created a column called department and the column called location. What I'm doing is, is segmenting my, um, my account number to tell me, um, for this account, what department does it belong to and what location does it belong to. Okay? I'll show you in a minute how that may become helpful. So now we're going to really just do some nifty um, uh, Excel formulas to essentially get these four columns. So the first one is amount. As I said before, I want one column called amount, and I'm going to make this a formula that takes my debit amount minus my credit amount. Okay, very easy. Next column, we're going to change our period. So I'm going to call it period, and I'm going to say equals value, and I'm going to point to my fiscal period. And you'll notice that it changed the 0, 1 to a 1, 0, 5 to 5. The last two are going to be department. Now here's a Excel formula that I'm going to, it's going to allow me to grab the middle segment, um, the middle two numbers um, of my count number. So I'm going to essentially do a formula called equal mid. I'm going to highlight that cell, comma, and I'm going to find the fifth position, and I'm going to return two val or um, two numbers from that fifth position. 
Oops. If you'll notice, it's now looked back at that uh, field or that cell, and it's returned the middle segment. And we do the same thing for location. We use the same formula. We're going to do mid, point back to that cell. Only this time, I'm going to find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to go to the 8th spot of that string, and I'm going to return the following two digits. And you'll notice that everything works out the way we want it to. So now I have enough information that I can create a nice pivot table that's going to essentially uh, give me the foundation for my um, income statement. So now, to create a pivot table, a couple of different ways you can create a pivot table. I usually just highlight a, a cell in my table, and I go to pivot table. It knows exactly what to pick up. I'm going to put it in an existing sheet, and we'll put it in H3. Now what am I going to do? Um, when we're creating a pivot table, we can pick and choose what rows we want, what columns, what values. My rows are going to be my account number and my account description. My column labels are going to be the period that we just created. You can see it's nice, columns uh, 1 through 12. My fiscal year, I'm going to put as a report filter. And finally, the amount is going to be what we're, uh, uh, is what we're running. Now, you can see this kind of looks peculiar. Um, we're, we're going to take a couple of steps to clean this up. First thing we're going to do, my ABC company is in uh, year 2010. Well, I want to look back to year 2009. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to filter this um, for the year. Second thing, you'll notice that uh, essentially a pivot table wants to create um, one row for the account, another row for the account description. What I, what I like to do is essentially go into um, the row label, go into account, go into field settings, and I'm not going to subtotal it. And this is the key. If you go to the second tab and you show items in tabular form, you're going to notice that it now created um, a nice uh, one row for both the uh, labels and the account description. We'll do the same thing for the account description. We'll go ahead and say none for subtotal and show items in tabular form. Okay, almost there. Now you'll notice that we have uh, everything from cash on hand all the way down to our account 9,000. Now since we're budgeting for our income statement, uh, we probably don't want any of our balance sheet accounts. What we're going to say is, let's go ahead and filter this um, for all of our account numbers that are greater than 400. So I can come over to our row label, and I can say label filter is greater than or equal to 400. A couple of different ways you can do this. Just one of the ways. So now you can see we have um, our sales numbers at the top, all the way down to our expenses. If you kind of see how this compares, um, one other thing that uh, I did earlier is I added departments. Let me show you what we're going to do if we add a department filter, because right now this income statement is um, company-wide. Our company-wide uh, net income was 20,800 um, for January, and for February, 26,847. So here's what we're going to do. We've got one more step. We can put a filter 
for location. And here's what we can do. Now we have all of our locations set. If we wanted to look at location number one, we now have location number one as our East Coast region. We now have a budgeted income statement for East Coast. In fact, if we took and we copied this, we could call this East Coast. And we can essentially copy and paste this over. And we can call this Central. And all we have to do is modify the location. Actually, 2 is left. And I think 3 is uh, it's central. Okay? So you can kind of see how we can easily um, create uh, uh, or look back um, at either department or location by creating a filter for those fields and simply selecting whichever we need. Okay? Step four, our working sheet. We're now going to take this information and we're going to export it to another sheet so that we can manipulate it. The pivot table is great for taking information and aggregating it, sorting it, grouping it. However, um, when we're budgeting, uh, we're usually taking uh, uh, a set of data and, um, uh, and we probably want to manipulate it and do some uh, different scenarios um, until we reach the point that the, and we feel good about um, our forecast for the following year. So we're going to take, we're going to do this for our whole company. Oops. So we're going to take this information. This is as easy as just cutting and pasting. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to place it in our working sheet webinar tab. And we're set. One other thing I'd like to mention, um, I'm going to go ahead and format this so the numbers look nicer. You'll notice that our sales accounts um, are all negative numbers. So, of course, um, in accounting, uh, our sales have a normal credit balance. So, by us taking the information from, um, uh, from our actual table, uh, our amounts here for our revenue accounts um, are naturally going to be negative. So, they're filtering over um, into the pivot table and up into this sheet as negative. Um, when we import, um, we are, depending on your import, um, you know, Mass will want a uh, credit account um, uh, for sales and then, of course, debit accounts for your expenses. So we'll leave these as, um, as credit numbers. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do a couple of things here. Let's first um, add, some, uh, uh, add some information that's going to help us. this out. This will be very easy for us just to just turn what we have into an income statement. So we have our net sales. We have our oops. Got a couple of items here. And it's very easy with Excel for us to go ahead and pull everything over. We now have cost of sales. Oops. There we go. 
and we're going to go ahead and give it some space. We're going to say total cost of goods sold. And finally, we have expenses. And we're going to go all the way to the bottom. I'll actually take this out. And we're going to say total. Okay. And finally, now if we look at net income, the net income is going to be our revenues. Actually, it should be minus cost of goods sold, minus total expenses. So, and again, keep in mind that since our um, revenues have a credit balance. Um, a credit balance and net income essentially indicates that we have net income. A positive amount essentially would indicate we have a net loss. Okay, so we've kind of created a somewhat of a quick and dirty um, income statement in Excel that's going to allow us to um, really start uh, using last year's information um, for this year's budget. So we're going to call it. 2009 actual. So now what are we going to do when we're budgeting? Well, we can take this information and start um, doing some what-if scenarios. So uh, what I like to do is create a workspace um, right next to uh, uh, our information. And at this point, we we'll probably just leverage what we've then over here, because what I've done is I've copied over um, columns 1 through 12 with a grand total on my workspace section. I don't know. I don't really know this is our workspace. And I'm doing a couple of things. There's a couple of ways you can, um, you know, manipulate, manipulate your data. You could say, you know what? I want to increase last year's amount by a certain percentage. And I put that um, uh, as a cell, W1. Now what I can do is I could say, you know what, for January, I'm going to look back at January of last year, and I'm going to increase it by 15%. So to do that, the formula is essentially doing C5, and we're multiplying it by 1 plus the percentage. So we're going to look at this cell. One other thing you should be aware of with Excel is if we want to lock this cell, all we have to do is hit F4. F4 allows us to take that number, let's pick that cell, and if we click and drag, so we click and drag it here. It's going to keep W1 so that it doesn't you know, essentially move to W2 and 3 and 4. Okay, so I took this amount, and I copied it, and at this point I'm going to do a paste special, and I'm going to do just formulas. The reason I do just formulas is I did all. Here's what I would get, which may be okay for some things, but uh, I'd rather not see the uh, heavy line. So I'm going to do paste special formula. And now that formula carries over to all the cells. And you'll notice that for December, we're looking back at cell N5, which is December of last year, and we're multiplying it by 1.15%. Okay, so we have our sales budget. Um, pretty simple. Um, we're going to increase sales by 15%. Now, 
for those of you that have inventory, there's a couple of ways you can budget inventory. Um, you know, one uh, one way would be um, to see um, how your cost of sales compares to your net sales. In this case, that's called gross margin. So last year we had fairly consistent margins, about 39 to 41 percent. What that's telling us is um, is our uh, actual inventory um, uh, cost us uh, approximately, you know, 40 percent. And actually, you know what? This is really that gross margin. This is our uh, cost of sales. Our gross margin is going to be one minus. 39%. So how do we do that? We say let's, let's take a look at um, our cost of sales line in row 21 in our purchases and we're going to say what percentage is that of our total sales? So the formula here is saying let's look at so row 21 so we're going to divide it by 017, and the reason I multiplied by negative 1 is just to give me a positive percentage. If not, I'd get negative 17.28%. So this is telling me that our purchases on average run about 17% of net sales. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply my net sales amount times the 17 percent. I'm going to multiply my net sales amount times my 11.64 percent. Okay? So at this point here, I'm going to get, I'm going to copy this formula I did over. And that's going to get me essentially my uh, cost of sales. Um, numbers. Now, expenses. Typically, uh, you know, these are areas that you're just going to analyze and determine um, what are the drivers. Well, um, you know, if, you, if you're finding that you're increasing sales by 15% next year, um, does that mean that you're going to need to hire more folks? Um, does it mean that you're um, utilities expense or rent expense is going to increase. Sometimes those may be flat. Okay. So a couple of ways, you know, to budget is you know, to analyze these accounts one by one and essentially hand enter them in here. Or do you just assume that they're going to increase by the same amount that you're, you know, forecasting your sales to increase? So for the, for the purpose right now, I'll show you how we can use the same formula to increase our amount by 15%. But keep in mind that you'll certainly want to, you know, determine um, are your expenses going to change rent. You probably know what your rent expense is going to be for next year. So this is something that you can hand on turn. So now let's talk about, we now have our workspace. We can go ahead and say, well, you know what, our, we're projecting sales of 4.11 million next year, and that's going to give us a net income of almost 200,000. Well, what happens if we increase sales by 20%? Well, you'll see that our numbers are not dynamic. You can see that we're, our sales are going to go up to 4.3 million, and our net income income increases as well. So we kind of have a, a nice little tool here that we can use. Um, and again, you know, with Excel, um, certainly a lot more we can do to make this uh, budget dynamic. Now we have a budget ready to go. So what do we do? Well, there's a couple of ways we can import budgets into math. Um, if you own the BI, Visual Integrator, you can create a job um, that actually imports into your budget tables. Okay? And it's very easy in terms of creating a, a or your uh, Excel spreadsheet will need a year. 
account number, the budget code, which we'll show you in a minute what that is, and then simply your um, months, 1 through 12. Similarly, if you don't have Visual Integrator, you can import budgets in the GL. If you go to Utilities and you go to General Ledger Exchange, we would have to. We can help you create um, this budget setting, but it's going to pretty much look um, similar to the file that you're going to create. If you're importing through BI. You're going to need your account number and you're going to need your um, periods 1 through 12. Okay, So creating an import file um, is very easy to do. And again, we're going to be copying and pasting. Um, so we're going to take essentially this information. And a couple of ways you can do this. You can copy and paste. And we're going to go back over here. And I'm just going to highlight all of my periods 1 through 12. And I'm going to paste it here. OK. Now you'll notice that there are some areas here without account numbers. Well, that makes sense because um, those were just rows that we had net sales. They didn't have account numbers attributed. So we're going to want to get rid of those. So what I like to do is just highlight everything. And I'm going to do a data and a sort. Column A. Now what I should find is have all of my information. I can probably get rid of these excess rows at the bottom. I now have a um, essentially an import file that I can take, I can copy, and save it out as a new workbook. Okay. Now I can save this spreadsheet on my desktop, and we'll call this budget upload for 2010. Okay. Now you can take this spreadsheet and you can import it either through um, General Ledger Exchange or through BI. Okay. Any questions so far? So now Let's walk through. Uh, we have a budget uploaded in that. Yeah. Question, Robert. Yes. Um, are we going to be able to get these steps later? It's hard to write them all down as you're talking. Yeah, and you, you know what I could do is I'll have this spreadsheet um, with the formula. Sometimes it helps with the, you know having the formulas in here. Um, yeah. So I could certainly make this spreadsheet available, and that um, if that. Yeah, it's got ABC data. The only thing you probably won't do is uh, do a database query, but you know we certainly have some videos out there on how to do database querying. But when it comes okay. time to actually create this um, with your data, you can certainly follow along in terms of how to you know, grab your data, dump it into a tab. After that, um, you know the pivot table uh, and the working sheet. You can certainly you know follow along this spreadsheet. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So once you're in math, uh -huh, and we go into the general ledger, and we go into budget, you can go into budget maintenance. And within budget maintenance, it has all of your account numbers. Okay. And you'll see that we have our um, budget numbers ready to go. So a couple of things you can do here. We imported 8,800 for 2010. Okay. Um, you can research this if you wanted to as the year goes on. And you could say, you know what? 
I want to look at 2010 budget versus 2010 activity. You now have an area where you can kind of research this. Now there's reports we can run to do it for a multitude of, of accounts. Certainly you can come in here on a one-by-one -one basis and research. Something else you can do. Oops. Back in here is let's go back to one of our expense accounts. It's easier to follow. Um, as you as the year goes on and uh, you're analyzing your accounts uh, and you want to make some changes, you can actually select any of these to say, you know what, I want to change my budget and I want to increase it by 10%. What it's going to do, you go right in, it's going to change everything by 10%. Okay, you can change it by a percentage, you can change it by an amount. You can also go in and you can say, you know what, I know that for the year instead of uh, the total being 13970 I know that um, It's going to be, you know, uh, we're going to adjust it. Well, actually, you know, the adjustment amount is going to be twenty thousand. And so, what it did is it simply, you know, increased it by twenty thousand for each of the months. So there's, you know, certainly some tools you can um, utilize uh, in this section. In this case, we're going to clear it, and we're going to start from scratch. You can even come in here and hand enter amount. Okay. So once your budget is uploaded, uh, you can certainly come in here to to tweak it or adjust it. Usually, the the heavy lifting comes, you know, at this time of the year, the next three or four months, um, really the heavy lifting is probably going to be in Excel. You're doing a lot of your analysis at this point to get the budgets into math. Once you're in math, um, if you found you made a mistake or you need to make some changes, rather than going in and, and clearing out your budget table and re-entering you know, your full budget, it's probably easier to come in here and simply make your changes. Okay. Any questions? Well, I think I uh, got done faster than I thought I would. So uh, a couple of things again with Excel. Um, as I uh, give you guys a spreadsheet, you know, certainly be cognizant of uh, some of the formulas that we utilize um, in terms of changing uh, period numbers, in terms of trying to get our departments and locations in here. Also, uh, uh, you'll be cognizant of creating pivot tables and uh, how to uh, create pivot tables uh, within Excel, how to filter um, our pivot table now, and how to filter essentially our data. And this certainly, for those of you that have departments or locations or other segments, um, this really becomes a, a nice tool for you to see um, what your different department expenses are. Robert, I have a question. Yeah. Um, when you go to Math 90 and you go to the exchange, uh -huh. can you uh, kind of click on that and because that's how I usually upload the budget through the exchange, sure. but. The way we do it is way more complicated than what you did. So if yeah. I did it your way, would it work? Or is it well, set up my old way? <laughs> no. So essentially, general ledger exchange, um, you have to have the file um, set up in a specific fashion. And we do have a, um, um, Bryce, we can probably provide also a, uh, a document along with the spreadsheet that tells you how the file needs to um, look. Uh, right. For the most part, the file is 
almost um, it's almost like this, but you are going to need essentially a couple more columns that have original, that have the year. Um, oh yeah, that look. Yeah, so so essentially the, the file layout has to be specific. We just don't have any place. Um, so if you are going for general ledger exchange, the file has to be in a specific fashion that will certainly um, you know, give you guys the, the column layout for it. Um, after that, um, you know, then you're set. So, so keep that in mind. If you go through BI, you have some more flexibility because with Visual Integrator, we have the ability to say, you know what, um, we want to, you're going to find our account number in field number one. You're going to find uh, January's number in column number four, and so on. So with CI, you know, we have some flexibility in terms of, of what the import file needs to look like. But certainly with general ledger exchange, um, you know, uh, Mass was developed with everything having to be in certain columns. So, so it's got to be that way. But we'll certainly forward that document out with a spreadsheet. Okay, perfect. And, and that, yeah, and that hasn't changed. Uh, that's pretty much been... Um, consistent uh, throughout the year. Do I have this VI thing? Um, you'll know if you own VI. VI is another module uh, in MAP that allows you to import into different areas of MAP. So if mm -hmm. you have a folder called Visual Integrator, then you own VI. Oh. oh, I have to check. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. But certainly okay. even with that, you know, I can certainly work with you guys in terms of creating creating a job for, for importing budgets is fairly easy. You know, it takes about maybe 10 minutes after we create the job. It's still, you know, we have to tell the job what columns we want to find those pieces of information. Um, but at least for budgeting, it's, it's very easy. It's either the minimal amount of data that's needed. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what's the budget code? So, good question. Um, so, within MASS, we have um, the ability to oops, go with my budget. We have the ability to create an unlimited number of budgets. And so, what you'll find is um, we have a budget code called original. We have oh, a budget okay. code called revised. We can actually create other budget codes called, you know, mid-year or 2011-1 or 2013 know, P2. So the budget code is whatever code we um, specify uh, uh, that we specify for budget. So normally your budget codes are going to be called original. Um, but you can create, you know, again, a budget code called revision, a budget code called, um, so you can create, you know, a multitude of budget codes. Oh, so this here, is where you create it. Letter, yeah, so you can see that we have original. This is our default budget, revised. Budget 3, we can call this 2013-Q1, and so on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. I have a sure. question as well. Um, could you yeah. tell me a little bit about how one accesses? I have not done queries at all, so I was totally um, lost. Sure. <laughs> and you, and were you doing know what? We, yeah, we actually, uh, Bryce, I, I know we definitely have some videos out there, um, uh, some YouTube videos that uh, one we've done in the past. Um, but doing a database query uh, in Excel is very easy. I'll just kind of do it real quick, but certainly we have some videos out there um, that go through this in detail. So you're going to go to your data tab. You're going to go to From Other Sources. You're going to go to From Microsoft Query. At this point, what you're doing is creating a connection to different databases. The connection to MAP is called SOTAMAP90. Okay. Now this is going to look like um, the screen when you log into MAP. 
you're going to have your different company code, and um, you're going to use your username and password, much like you log into Mac. This is essentially to establish a connection. Once you're at this point, so you're only going to be able. To, uh -huh. I'm a little confused. So the, I can get to this point, but then when I get to this point, I'm totally lost. Yeah. So how does so, what so file here, yeah. looking at yeah. in so at this point here, you really have to know what you're looking for. So for um, budgeting purposes, I know that um, our uh, actual information is contained um, in our GL period posting history table. So, um, so I know where to find that information. Um, you does guys can certainly... Hybrid. Yeah, so a couple of things. We have classes that tell you where to find data um, when you're looking to create reports or to do query. Um, there's a class called data uh, file structure. Um, at the same time, when I have clients that are looking to design reports or really get into crystal reports, um, you know, certainly you guys can email um, you know one of our uh, support analysts, and we can tell you where to find that information. Okay, so in here, these are all the tables in math, um, lots of tables. But if you tell us you know, we wanted to um, grab our GL uh, or uh, information that um, we wanted to recreate an income statement or a balance sheet. I can pretty much tell you that you're going to find that information in the GL period posting history table. Okay? If I was looking at account maintenance um, and I wanted to see my account number, my account group, at least everything on my main tab, I know that I can find that information in my GL account table. So really, at this point here, you are going to be initially, you know, relying on, on us to kind of guide you through where to find that information. But we all, we do have a class called Data File Structure. Um, which is usually a prerequisite for learning about crystal reports, um, which is going to tell you um, where are all the, where do I find all of the information in math? What tables are they located in? Okay. So keep in mind again for these purposes, if you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, do this, you're going to find this information in um, the GL period posting history table. And also these first two columns are found in the GL account table. And again, sometimes uh, you know it certainly helps to kind of review the um, as we as we put this out on our website, you can probably go through it again and you know kind of pause it, go through on your system in Excel. Let's see if you can recreate it. So do I just go to YouTube to get that? Yeah, I think Bryce is going to send out an email with uh, with a link to this um, uh, to this seminar once it's concluded. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. And like I said, um, uh, we also do have some other seminars in, in terms of uh, database querying specifically and business insights. Uh, as well as some of the other uh, modules. So do you access that through an email or do you access that through YouTube? I'm confused. Um, Bryce, you can probably point out. I, I, know, <laughs> uh, I know if I actually go to uh, uh, Yahoo and I punch up followers uh, uh, or data, or we could even go to ISM database query. Um, I'll actually go ahead and go ahead. Uh, just kind of put the, the the URL for our channel into the chat window here. Yeah. Get access to all that this, stuff. And this is it. So we have some YouTube videos on essentially how to do what we just did. Okay.
Yeah, the only thing that we don't have here is, is um, where do you find the information? Now you know how to pull information from NAS directly into Excel, but um, uh, now how do I know uh, where to find that information? And certainly it's going to be either uh, asking one of our analysts or um, uh, or taking a, another class and understanding where the data resides in that. Okay. Excellent. Any other questions? Very good. Well, like Bryce said, next month we have a nice seminar on uh, uh, inventory, inventory control, uh, especially in uh, four or five. Uh, your inventory is uh, 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 up to uh, up to speed. We can uh, we'll discuss running um, a uh, valuation report by period, so that uh, we don't have to essentially print it out each month. We can run it. Uh, for last month, we can run it at any time, and we'll certainly go through some other uh, uh, ice utilities with an inventory. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if you guys have any questions, certainly um, uh, we can forward them, uh, I guess, to our support line, and um, uh, and you'll certainly have some links on uh, how to do not only database querying, but uh, how to simulate a, uh, creating a budget.